What's going on, everybody? We are back here at the Friar Place where the conversations are fire. I'm Irving Fryer, the host here at the Friar Place with another great guest today. Y'all come on in the room. I know it's 6 p.m. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to come on in the room. We got a special guest who actually is coming back or is back for the second time at the Friar Place. Uh, but that's because we got some new news. We got some special stuff we need to talk about. So we brought him back. We invited him back and he accepted the invitation. So we're going to talk with him in a little while. But uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to come on in the room. I know it takes a second for you to acknowledge yourself. We just came on live, so I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Listen, please don't forget about the fact that we are live at the Cigar Code every first Friday of every month from 6 to 7. Live guests, live audience, the Cigar Code, 939 North Delaware Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right next to the Rivers Casino, we're live there every first Friday. Last first Friday, y'all, we had great get a great guest. It was Barrett Brooks. Before that, we had Doug uh, Hugh Douglas. Before that, we had Mike Quick. Before that, actually, our first one before that was uh, Ron Jaworski. So we're looking forward to having our next guest. I think, I think, I think it could very possibly be the mayor of Philadelphia. That's gonna be off the chain. I chain. I love her. She has a great story. She has great energy, and she speaks from the soul. So you don't want to miss that. But we'll let you know about that. You always see the advertisements as we post them. But, you know, keep your heads up or keep your eyes open and your ears open for that advertisement. But before we go to our guest, before we bring him in, we have some bills we want to pay. We need to take a commercial break. Check this out. Are you planning a special trip or a night out? Don't bother with the hassle of driving, parking, and traffic. Just call Ed Smooth Transport. One way or round trips available. We will take you there. And we will also pick you up. Enjoy a night on the town. With Ed Smooth Transport. Call us. 609-471-2653 or 609-314-6619. Visit our website to take advantage of our monthly specials at www.smoothtransport.com. Ed Smooth Transport. Where experience meets comfort. All right, we're back. Paid the bills. <laughs> Great commercials. Listen, he's back for a second go round here at the Friar Place. This is third round draft choice, nineteen ninety four. Uh, actually, he's playing defensive lineman, offensive lineman, both. He's just a big guy. North Carolina State drafted by the Cowboys. We won't hold that against him. Came over and played with me with the Eagles. Yep, played with the Bucks. Offensive tackle, seven years in the NFL, Super Bowl champion with the you – can't, you can't deny him this. Super Bowl 30 with the Cowboys. Mm. <laughs> Straight out of Camden, New Jersey, y'all. Let's put, put a hand together. Put your hands together for none other Mr. George Hegeman. Yes, sir. What's going on, George? What's up, Irv? Glad to be back again, man. Yeah, man. Good to have you back. I heard – I saw – 
it was posted that now you are out in Colorado. And I'm jealous. I see all the mountains in the back. I assume you're sitting in your office at the stadium. What is going on, man? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I, I, the first thing I did is when I walked in the building and they showed me my office, Man, I just glared at the mountains because I was like I was telling you before, man, it's a majestic look. Like to see something that much bigger than I am, and that I don't know how much beautiful it is than I am. <laughs> no, you're a beautiful man. You're a beautiful man. <laughs> but, but what it is, man, it's 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 a great it's a great sight. Very good city, man. I'm I'm here with some people that I respect and admire. Mm -hmm. You know that understand what I do uh, very well, man. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, you brief of, briefly talked a little bit about your relationship with Coach Prime the first time you were on the Friar Place. Uh, and this is not where I wanted to go first, but since we're there, we'll just go there. Um, so so what what spurred, you know, the decision for you to come? What what was taking place? Were there conversations? Were you in touch with him? I'm sure, you know, but what conversation took place like, okay, George, you need to come here or Prime, listen, I need to be there. You know, the, the interesting thing, man, is like I was telling you before, so Prime and I, we've been tight since 1995. Uh-huh. And the, the the best part of us being tight had nothing to do with football. Okay. It yep. was his approach to football, his approach to just life in general, mm -hmm. and I gravitated to that. You know, much like how you and I gravitated when I got to Philly, man, good people know good people. Right. Like if I'm being totally honest with you, man, and you know, we've just been very fortunate over the years, man, to maintain our relationship, but also progress the things that was important to us, which was mentorship, training and mentoring young athletes. To oh, we got a little freeze there. We got a little freeze in the house. <laughs> All right. He must have uh, must have froze on his side. I'll see if he comes back. He's still okay. There he is. There he is. Okay, there you are. You froze there for a minute. Okay, you know, am, 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 I, am I froze now? Am I good? No, you, no, you're back. Go, go ahead and finish up. <laughs> finish what you were saying no, about I, the mentorship and all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what I was saying is that's how we connected, and then the part you know that made it even more special than that was I was actually supposed to go with him to Jackson State. Okay, but that's at the last second. I chose to stay at IMG Academy uh, to continue on what I was doing there. And here's the thing, the relationship between him and I was, look, man, you got to follow your heart, follow your heart. We're going to follow ours. And, you know, we brothers, we'll figure it out. Right. Who knows? We'll never know what's going to end up happening. And this is what happened. You know, we maintained our relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's never a business relationship. You know, it's a brotherhood, man. You know mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah. So yeah. we got to contact to the entire ordeal man and you know god put us right where we needed to be when we needed to be there so so two questions out of that uh what caused you to make or what was the deciding factor what was the deciding factor in you staying at img and not going to jackson state man you know what so personally man i was i was going through some situations with my marriage Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I decided, man, you know, I'm going to take uh, Look, I'm, so, I'm sorry for asking. Here's the thing. The thing is, is that how do people best learn? They learn from you giving them transparent information. Yep. Right. Yeah. So so from that, you know, you know, my whole story, man, I've, I've had some ups and some downs. Yep. We all. Do. Yes. Sir. But in that situation, it was look. Let me try to do what I feel like God is telling me to do. Mm -hmm. and, and and from that, the best thing is going to happen from that. And here's the deal is that it did. It just took a little while longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you then you're sure about your decision or you're sure about your move because you've gotten confirmation because you waited. You waited for things to play out. You waited for certainties to happen. You waited for the picture to become absolutely clear. That's 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 a wonderful thing. So. Talk to me about the conversation uh, between you and Prime and you making the decision to come to, to go to Colorado. Yeah, so that that's the interesting thing. It was never like a ongoing, it was never like a one conversation deal. Okay. It was us just continuing to talk about the possibility. Mm -hmm. So from that, 
you know, it, it took probably several conversations. Never how, never I'm thinking about bringing you or I'm thinking about coming. It was, we got this type of relationship. Man, look, man, when, when you getting up here? You know, I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like prime too, yeah. <laughs> you know, right? So, man, when you getting up here? So I said, look, let, as soon as we can figure out A and B, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be ready to go. And we did that. Wow. That's, that's, that's awesome, man. I just, when I heard the news, when I saw the news, it was great. I'm, I want to go back. This is something that we, when, when you were at the fry, when you were at the fryer place the first time, something that we did not necessarily uh, touch on. What's going on, Keenan Harmon? Keenan is watching right now. Good look. Thanks. Good looking out, brother. Shout out to you. Um, we didn't cover this or we didn't talk about it, but when you were in college, North Carolina state, uh, you yeah. came out early. You didn't play your junior and senior year, which is, you know, that's not frequent. I mean, it happens more now than it did back then because guys are chasing the bag right now. They're trying to get to the NFL and make that big money. But uh, talent-wise, it doesn't really happen where guys come out their sophomore year and are successful in the NFL. But you did that because um, your mother was diagnosed with cancer at the time. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was home for I was home for a summer, I believe. Matter of fact, I was. I was home for a summer, mm-hmm. and my mom has always been a real like upbeat, you know, type person. You know, kind of speaker mind. You know, and and always had a very good attitude about most things. In this particular summer, when I was home, you know, she had shared with me that you know she was having some having some issues, uh, physically. Didn't quite share with me exactly what they were. Mm-hmm. But I had a conversation with my grandmother, as a matter of fact, and she said, well, listen, she's not going to tell you, you know, but this is you need to know what's going on. So that was kind of relationship me and my grandmother had, you know, mm-hmm. up until the time she passed. And uh, I remember driving back to school. It was only like a six hour drive from, New Jersey, you know, from Camden, you know, down, down in North Carolina State. And I was driving back to school with some buddies. And I just told them, I said, man, I, I just don't see how I can stay in school past this year. Mm hmm. What 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 are, you, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, here it is. I'm going back to North Carolina State, comfortable dorm, three meals a day, mm-hmm. uh, great weather, living living good down that state. I'm leaving my mom back at the hood, and she got cancer. Plus, she's working two shifts at a time. Mm-hmm. I just don't see how that's adding up. Right. So for me, my last year, my sophomore year, it was NFL or bust. Now, here's the deal. Irv, like I was telling you before, can you imagine if we had NIL when when, when we were in college? I would have stayed right. all four years. I would yeah. probably did an extra year. Yeah. But it was a business decision for me, man. You know, I love I love playing at NC State. I love being there. I was the mm-hmm. man there. Right. Are you kidding me? You know, and it was a great situation, man. But at the same time, you got to do what you have to do. So that's what I did. Are you speaking of that NIL now? Now you, I mean, you were at uh, IMG, so I mean, you really weren't necessarily involved in the NIL, but now you're actually there and you're experiencing it firsthand. You're involved with these young men or young athletes, I should say, that uh, mm-hmm. that are influenced by or in the middle of the NIL. Um, right. What What is that doing for college football, and how you know how is it affecting? you know, what's going on there in Colorado. So, and, and, you know, I don't think this is, you know, isolated to what's happening here at Colorado. I think right, it's no. mm-hmm. big time college sports in general, right? Uh, you have kids that, when I made that decision to leave school, I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. I was 18 years old when I made that decision. I left at 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, got drafted at 20, right? One of the youngest players to ever be drafted at that time. Uh the decisions that they have to make now and being thrusted into being the patriarchs of their families now Mm -hmm. because they have money. Can you imagine psychologically what that does to any of these kids? A, they don't have the proper financial training. B, now their families are asking or even demanding that they be the leaders of the family. And then C, they got to manage playing football, graduating, graduating college, and then figuring out the next level. That's a very difficult thing to do now. But here's the here's the kicker to all of that. Mm -hmm. You got the transfer portal in this thing. So now college football is indeed exactly 
what the NFL is being players that you draft, i.e. high school players that you recruit. Mm-hmm. And you got free agency via via the, the transfer portal now. Right. right. So that's what college football is. You know, and you, you hear a lot of coaches talk about, well, I wish it was like it was in the old days. Let me tell you something. It's not going back to that. No, it's, it's, it's never going to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's gotten not, it's gotten out of hand. They'll never turn the clock back. They'll never cut it off. It's just going to continue to uh, increase and pick up speed and uh, increase. That I mean, so so what are some of the? I mean, I know you you've only been there for a short period of time. It's not been like you know a year that you've been there. Um, so what are some of the conversations that go on with that regard when you talk about um, players? whether they're, they want to go into the portal or whether they're in the portal trying to get to Colorado, trying to get to a certain college. What are some of those conversations that, and I know your, your position is director of football leadership and engagement. Yep. That's what you do. So you're involved directly with the players. You're trying to, you're trying to explain to them. You're trying to mentor them. You're trying to uh, uh, guide them along uh, in the right direction with every area, with every aspect of life, not just in sports, but you know, society, financially, emotionally, with family, all of that. That's what you're doing. I know that's what you're doing. I don't know, I know that you're passionate about that, and that's what you want to do. You love working with kids. You love uh, the job that you're in. But what are yeah. some of those conversations with that, with, with that regard? The, the, the conversations, from my point of view, are very poignant and very transparent, right? And mm-hmm. you have to be heard because now when you were going to college, when we were going to college, or even – let's say five, 10 years ago, you were going there with the idea or the mindset, I'm going to be there four years, right? three years at, at, at the least. Right. Well, now that three years can now turn into a semester. <laughs> so it, it's a, and ask the truth about it. So here's what you have to do, right? It's a, it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach that you got to take, but that's why you got to have people who have walked that walk before. Okay. You have to have people not just have walked the walk, but have done it at a very high level, very successful level. So what I do is I give them my own transparent story on, on top of all the very all the other many kids that I've helped transition from high school to college, college to the pros, pros into retirement. Mm-hmm. Like I've been there, I've done that. My, it was I had the same job when I was at the NFL Players Association. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing about it, man, is giving them the real information. That's going to be beneficial to them in real time. And the, and the information is so much different than what it was five years ago. Because like I said, you have kids that are looking to transfer out. You got kids that are looking to transfer in. Mm-hmm. And all their reasons aren't necessarily the same. Here's the one thing that we know. 99% of them want to go to the NFL. Less than 1% of them are going. But the other 99% should leave that college situation with enough knowledge, with enough tools to be a professional at something mm-hmm. like they should. So right. with that being said, the approach that I take, like I said, I'm extremely transparent with them about my story, about the stories that I know work, the stories that didn't work, and I give it to them in real time in real fashion. If you're not communicating with athletes like that today, they're flat out just not going to believe you, bruh. They're, wow. they're not going to believe you because everything, think about this, Er, everything that they want to know is literally at their fingertips now. Right, right. Everything. So you could talk about you being the first round draft pick. The first thing they're going to do is Google you. Right. You could talk, <laughs> you could talk about being the, the incredible athlete you were at Nebraska. The very first thing they're going to do is Google you. Right. They're right. going to fact check you. So you can't come with falsified information. You got to come with real facts, real information. And info that's going to help them right there, right now. What, and that's what, is, what we're doing. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, so I'm saying that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. I think we calculated, man, from our coaches, uh, coaches, and uh, coaches and staff, we've got over 127 years wow. of NFL playing, coaching, college playing, and coaching experience on the staff. And here's the, the biggest thing is. This isn't just for fluff. How many Division I teams can say that they have a Hall of Famer as their head coach who genuinely cares, Mm -hmm. genuinely cares about every last kid in the program that comes from the background that he comes from, 
have achieved the level of success that he's mm -hmm. achieved and he's giving back every single day. The one thing, the one notion I, I want to get people get in people's head is Prime is not one of these coaches that just shows up and makes sure everybody else does their work. Like right. he's in the trenches with everybody every right. single day. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. single day. Or if you can't find that nowhere. No. No. And then when you go down the list and you start looking at the people that we got coaching positions, man, everybody's played. Kevin Math is 10 years in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Warren sat now on, on, on the staff, mm -hmm. another Hall of Famer in the building that knows how to coach and, 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 and communicate with kids, right? People like myself, we got other people on the other side of the ball. Like, if this is not me bragging, this is what you need to have right, in right. order to protect kids that are coming in college today. It's, it's, it's a very, and that's why I wanted to have you on because it's a very unique, it's a want, once in a lifetime unique situation that's going on out there not just with the whole Colorado scene football wise in its entirety, but what you're doing, like you said, from the head coach prime hall of famer to the other coaches who have all of this experience, not just in life, but in football, uh, some in, in high, the, the highest level of football. And uh, the kids are very, very, very fortunate. Those who are out there right now, who get an opportunity to play at Colorado university with the Buffaloes right now, uh, yeah. this is something that, you know, had I had it when I was a kid, man, I, forget Jerry Rice. He'd be talking about Urban Fryer. <laughs> so, so, so what's the, for me now, what you do, I couldn't do, bro. That's not my gift. <clears throat> I don't, I don't seem for me, it, it's hard for me to connect with the younger generation it just is I, I guess i'm just old school and i do things differently you know you, the coach is the coach you don't if the coach tells you something you just do it you don't ask any questions that's how i was that's how i was raised that's how i played that's the era i came up in and i know things are different now um what are some of those challenges though that you have with the next generation coming up right now along with throwing gas on the fire with the NIL because that's, you know, they see money. They hear money. They want money. They smell money. And that's what the NIL is all about. It's about money. Yeah. 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 So here's the, here's the interesting thing, right? And this is going to probably trip you out. Let's go back to when we were teenagers, probably even a little younger than that. And our mom told us to do something. What's the one thing that we couldn't say back to her? You better not. You better not say nothing. You better not. You, you better why? Not you can't say why. No. Well, why? But here's the deal. Why now? Why now? As a coach, as a mentor, even as a parent, that's got to become a part of your strategy in managing your kid. Exactly. Like that's and that's why I'm asking that question. Yeah. <laughs> you have. You have. You have to deal with the why because, like I told you, they are armed with so much more information. Mm -hmm. That just saying because I said so isn't enough. It's not it's not enough. Now, here's the deal. I was always an inquisitive kid. Always. Mm -hmm. Thank God I had my grandmother because she was my grandmother to me was my Google when I when she was alive. Mm -hmm. She was any question I had, anything I wanted to know That's about. Grandma. She, yeah. would, she would give me the information and then steer me in the right direction to figure out more about it. Uh -huh. Well, when you think about today's athlete, man. Listen, everything is at their fingertips now. Right, right. So whatever it is, like I said before, whatever it is that you're telling them, mm -hmm. they not only see that's 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 first level information what you're telling them. Right, right. Now you gotta be able to give them second and third and fourth level information now. If you can't <laughs> do that, you're gonna struggle with today's athlete, but that's something that we do every single day. Wow. That's uh it's just different. It's just different. And um I have a I'm old. I'm stuck in my old ways, I guess. <laughs> but hats off to you, man, because you're able to transcend into different generations and give them the information and the experience that you've had. You've had. And that's and see, for me, that's one of the reasons they should not necessarily be asking why in the way they're asking why. Why? Because you've been there. You've been there and you've done that. They're trying to do something that you've already done now. Correct. If you if you built the relationship in a way or if the relationship has been established in a way where they trust you and they trust what you're saying, then they should trust when you say this is the way to do it. 
and not necessarily ask why. Why? Because you've been there. You've done that. You've experienced the bumps, bumps. You've, you've made the mistakes and you're trying to impart into them what they need to do and how to do it without having to go through all the mistakes. True, true. But OK, I want you I want you to consider this as well. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's the other thing that access gives you or gives to an athlete. By the time that they come to you to ask you a question, okay. like I said, they've already done their own research. So if your answer isn't at a higher level than what they've already researched, then you become mundane to them. Mm. So now here's what here's what I find now. All the bumps, out, bumps and bruises I've been through, all the success that I've had, they say, hey, coach, you know what? That's great. I see if you've done this, that, and the other. But do you know that X player did it this way and he got success doing it that way? So if he could do it, why can't I do it that way? So my old school answer would be because I told you to do because it the I way I was doing it, yeah. right? But that can't be it because now that trust that you talked about with that athlete, Earl, right. he's no longer going to trust you because he's going to feel like you're trying to steer him in one direction. And you're not respecting how he thinks about his own level of intelligence or his own abilities. Mm -hmm. So the thing that you have to do is take into consideration what they know, get them to a point to where they start understanding, OK, I do know quite a bit, but I don't know as much as he knows. He can he can take the information that I have, help me use that to make myself that much better. Wow. You, you it's, know, a it's a yeah, problem. Yeah, you yeah, dude, you're like a psychologist or a psychiatrist. My goodness. <laughs> you should have a degree. <laughs> well, I do. I mean, Herb, that's the thing is, 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 I, is I do right now. I'm finishing up a doctorate right now in sports psychology. So the, the thing is, is that it's one thing to know all that information, right? right. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother thing to be able to take that information apply. and apply it yes. to a specific generation of athletes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Only mm -hmm. only a few people can do that. And I'll be totally honest with you. I'm still learning how to do that at the highest of levels. But the one thing I can say is that my track record ba basically speaks for itself. Right. I've got more than 15 guys in the NFL that are still in the NFL right now. One of the best offensive tackles to ever play the game, Trent Williams, is he one got, of my guys. He got 11 right? Pro Bowl. I didn't know he was 11, an 11-time 11 Pro Bowler, man. That is crazy. Bowler, man. 11 time Pro Bowl, a very special human being, right? And that's the thing. If it's an athlete listening to this or watching this, he just didn't, Trent Williams just didn't get that way because of what he is as an athlete. He is a very special human being between his ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? that's what Going it takes. Back to who I have this year, J.C. Latham coming out this year from Alabama. I told you I was going to tell you a story. When he came to IMG, he came to IMG as a defensive end. Mm -hmm. He had never played offensive tackle before. Wow, wow. At the, time, at the time, I was just an offensive line coach, but I told our head coach at the time, I said, Coach right, listen, that kid, the way that he thinks, the way that he processes information with his athletic ability, that's a first-round draft pick. Wow. So all we, all we did for the next three years, Irv, was just work on teaching him how to be a professional offensive tackle. Wow. He left IMG with more than 100 offers. Ended up going to Alabama, became an All American there. Now he's going to be one of the top top ten, top fifteen pick in the NFL draft. You don't wow. get there just by having athletic ability. You have to be able to have the type of ability between your ears to be able to take your athletic ability to that next level. He's one of those kids that can do that. Well, that that we know that that's what separates the greatest from the greats. You know, the, the Michael Jordans and the, the Magic Johnsons and the Allen Iversons and the Kobe Bryants. I'm, I know I'm sp hold speaking on, about. But, 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 but in the Irvin Friars, though, and the Irvin <laughs> Friars. Like, listen, hold on, bro. Let, let me give you your flowers. Let me give you your flowers. I remember. Now listen, I came from Dallas. I think I told you the story before. Came from Dallas, played with Michael Irvin. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best in shape dudes i've ever seen in my life in my life and i remember saying to myself and i know and, my, and trust me mike was one of the best teammates one of the hardest workers ever mm -hmm. i get to philly 
and I mean this in all due respect, like carbon copy in terms of like how you guys took care of your bodies. Mm-hmm. All right, fast forward all the way to the point now. I'm gonna put your whole your whole audience on blast. I uh-huh. think I even texted you one day and said this. You had 145 pounds over your head in the weight room at five o'clock in the morning, and you 50 something years old. <laughs> I wasn't 50. Oh, oh, you mean yeah? Okay, I know you're talking about. You talking about now? About, now. <laughs> I'm 61. I'm 61 years old, bro. <laughs> you 61 years old. Here's the point I'm making, though, Herb. Here's the point I'm making. You possess that same thing. Right. Yeah. You still possess that same thing mentally at 61. Mm-hmm. There's, I'm 51. I'm 10 years younger than you. I still look up to you and say, man, look at Herb, man. I got to get out there and get it. <laughs> I gotta get out there and get it. Look at her. It's, it's five o'clock in the morning, and he is doing deadlift squats with with 145 pounds over his head. Like, so, my point is, those are the types of things, man. You, those are things that were instilled in you, right, from a long time ago that still remain in you now, right. That right. has nothing to do with athletic ability. That is all mental toughness and mindset. Right. And that, again, like I said earlier, like you were saying, that's what separates the greatest from the great or the or the the greats or the, no, so the great or the greatest. They're the greatest. The Michael, like I said, the Michael Jordans and the, the those kind of cats, the the Walter Payton's the you know, the greatest ones of all. It's it's not that they have more athletic ability. It's because they have more mental toughness. They they're sure. stronger. They're better. They're wiser up here. Um, yep. so that, that's what separates them from those who just make it and do okay. Um, and, and even in times like you, George, you, you got it too. Even in times of toughness, in our times of tribulation, in our times yep. when we, we go down and hit bottom, that's what gets us back. Our mental toughness and our ability to hang in there and persevere and do it consistently over time which takes, you know, it takes some mental toughness to be able to do that, to get back on your feet, to get out of a hole, to make that comeback. That's what it takes. Um, and, and you know, it's far and few in between. A lot of cats have physical talent, but that, that factor, that mental factor that puts them over the top, that's far and few in between. That's the, uh, the Trent Williams. That's the, like you said, the J.C. Lathams, the guys who right. are going to, to come in, play, make a big difference, Stand on top, shine more than everybody else, and go out with glory. Um, so, so since you mentioned him, J.C. Latham, can you give us like um, some inside information about what's going to happen with him in the draft? <laughs> <laughs> you got you got some inside information, bro. <laughs> this, this this is what I know. This this is what I know. Well, we know During he's going to go in the first round. He's going in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this, this is what I know. During this time of year. You know, when you have a guy that's as highly talented as him, you start hearing from general managers, you start hearing from coaches, and you start hearing from scouts. And I have. And it's interesting that they've all had the very same things to say about him. So here's what that tells me. What that tells me is what they see on tape along with what they understand uh, about him as a human being is resonating with what they want in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and to me, again, I've always tried to instill in JC. JC's like my son, like like he he is. The kid has the has an ability, Irv, to compartmentalize better than some adults do. Wow, some forty and fifty and sixty year old adults do. Mm-hmm. He understands how to take issues that he might be going through, place them to it, place them to the side, focus on what's in front of him, and then have the mental capacity to come back to it and then try to decipher what was going on at that particular time so we can fix it and move forward. Right. And that, that takes mental, that takes a mental capacity that most people don't understand even, even how to develop. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. he came in with that. And the one thing we focused on more so than what he was doing on the football field was to help him develop that even more. Okay. So it's, it's working out to his benefit now. Right, so right. here's what I know. I know that any team that gets him is going to get a guy that's laser focused, that understands what his abilities are, that's humble enough to say, I don't know, teach me, show me. He's a, he's he's thirsty for information, 
He's the kind of guy that you want in the locker room. You being a pro bowler yourself, you understand that kind of having that kind of guy mm -hmm. in the locker room because he's going to always be trying to search for what's best for him and what's best for his unit. Right. Is he, is he a day one starter? Day one. In my opinion, he's a day one. He's a day one guy. Now, what most most people might do, which they've done with most tackles, is probably slide him inside just to get him some reps. The guard, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah they'll quickly figure out, you know, he's got the feet. He's got the understanding, and he's got to know how to block the edge. So, but yeah, I definitely think he's a day one starter. Okay, well that's awesome. So, so your title, my mom is watching right now. My mom, I don't know when she said that's right, but at some point she said that's right. Vinny Capriati's <laughs> watching right now. What's going, on, Vinny? Listen, your title there uh, is director of football leadership and engagement uh, out at Colorado with the Buffaloes, Coach Prime. So, yeah. what what exactly do you do? What exactly does that mean? Yeah, so everything that you've heard me say uh, up to this point is what I'm doing with the younger generation. Look at it this way. Let's 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 focus on exactly what we have, what every college has on campus right now. You have returning players, you have incoming freshmen, you have transfer portal guys that are coming in. I also talk to you about what the landscape of college football looks like right now. Mm -hmm. It's pay to play. It's also, if I don't like it, I can come in January, I can leave in May and go somewhere else. Well, here's the thing. The kids that continue on that cycle going round and round and round, they're right. going to find out that continuously transferring to other schools isn't the next, isn't the best thing for them. What my role is, is that when we get you, or if you're already here, is to meet you exactly where you are, help you construct or craft a plan that's going to help you get from where you are to where your aspirations lie. Okay. Now, how do you do that? You do that but by being very specific about the plan that you put in place from day one. Most people don't do that. Most people don't understand how to do that. Most people don't even realize that they need to do that. So when I look back at my college experience, Herb, if I had a me that said, mm -hmm. okay, Big George, what is it that you want to accomplish while you're here? Mm -hmm. We would have sat down. I would have explained to him what the things are that I enjoy, the things are that I don't enjoy, what I'm good at, what I think I'm good at, what I need improvement in. And we would have constructed a plan and say, OK, here's here's where you are. Here's who you are. Here's how we're going to help you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You got to be you got to be ultra specific about that these days. Why? Because just like we talked about, it, when it gets hard, people can leave. Mm. Right, right. So, you know, or they will leave. <laughs> they will leave. So, yep. so what my role is, if I'm putting it all in one box, my role is that when we get you, show you that it's valuable for you to stay and grow here so you can leave like you should need, like you should leave, as opposed to what everybody else is doing, chasing bags and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. And that's got that's got to be challenging, man. Not necessarily, I don't want to use the word difficult or hard, but that's got to be challenging because, you you know, you're dealing with personalities, you're dealing with kids from different cultures, different backgrounds, different family situations, just from all over the place. Uh, and then it's just, it's it's a lot, man. You got a lot going on. You got a big task for a big man. I know you're up to it, bro. And I know you guys are doing a great job. Listen, last year when Coach Prime came to Colorado and everything started, you know, just like a, things just took off. Everybody was excited. You know, they buying yep. glasses and all that prime glasses, <laughs> sunglasses. It was just, it was off the chain. Have yeah. things settled down and kind of leveled off or is there still that excitement about, because I, I believe, uh, and I, I read something or I heard an interview you were talking about, you know, watching Colorado football last year and they started off real well 3-0 and I was cheering them on and then things started sliding downhill and then you got the haters that come along ah, prime ain't all that nah. and I, I couldn't stand either I couldn't take it I'm like okay prime we need what, what we need to do here to get this thing going in the right direction and he spoke well like yeah okay yeah we didn't do well this year but you better catch me now because it's the worst I'm gonna be I love when he said that um so has has the excitement leveled off or is it even more exciting because now they've got a year under their belt. Uh, they've had an opportunity to, you know, examine what the team is like and know exactly what they need to do to better the team this coming year. Uh, they've got a year in that conference and it, at that level of ball uh, coaching and playing. So they're, they're more prepared 
going into this year. So as the excitement the same, is it still like a, a house on fire or, or what, I mean, it's just electric out there. Listen, listen, our head coach is nicknamed prime time. <laughs> well, you know, he that, nicknamed, that is, that's who he is. <laughs> that is the moniker, right? But, but here's the most beautiful thing about it, man, is, you know, and I, I can share this amount of information. Uh, one of the very first meetings I was in, you know, he told all of us, like, listen, our time is now. Right. It, it's now. It's not tomorrow. So you get a sense of everything that we should be doing right now should be geared towards us being successful right now. Wow. Yeah. Right now. So you have to have that mentality. I'm talking about from the people preparing the food from us, the strength and conditioning coaches, the trainers, the equipment people, the people that are taking care of the grass. Like everybody has that same mentality. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. about right now. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I compare it to the very first time, and I know you're not going to like this, but Uh-oh. the very first time I walked into a Dallas Cowboy locker room. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm not going to like it, but it's the truth. <laughs> but, but it's the truth. I, I, and listen, when I walked in that locker room, I knew that I had to become my best self that day. That day. Now, most people look at that and call it pressure. It's To us, it's expectation. Expectation, yeah. Expectation. And, so, oppor- and opportunity. And opportunity. And opportunity, absolutely. So the, the, the most important part about that is that we've done a really good job, the staff has done a really good job of putting in the pieces that weren't here last year, mm-hmm. right? I don't care how much you talk about it. Right. You still got to have the Jimmys and Joes on the football field to be able to compete. Right. Yep. So we're there. We're there now. Now is getting everybody to gel together, become a winning team. But, you know, as, as much as I know, all that kind of stuff starts right now. So mm-hmm. to answer your question, listen, the fire is still lit around here. Trust me. Wow. It's it's awesome, man. Have you ever I, I had someone call me earlier today, um, a guy that I actually texted me earlier today, a guy that I've known for several years whose kids are growing up. And they're starting to play football. He's got a son who's a large man, large kid like yourself. By the way, you're the largest person I've ever met in my life. I've told you that every time I see you. I've never met anybody. You're the biggest dude I ever know, man. You and Richmond Webb. Richmond Webb is big cat, too. That cat there, man, was huge. Uh, (laughs) He was asking me, because he was supposed to come on and watch. I don't see him on right now, about... He said, you know, you got football camps where you got quarterbacks and you got wide receivers and running backs, but they very rarely have any camps. He's looking for a camp for his son, for linemen. Yeah. Have you ever, do you know of any? Have you ever thought about doing any? Have you ever thought about, you know, starting one? Uh, do you do you do one? Yeah, so so all of the above, right? All of the above. Here's Here's the most interesting thing about us as big guys, right? Even when I was here, I'm, I, how old? How old is the kid uh, that we're talking about? Earlier? I think he's uh, twelve or thirteen years old. Right. So middle school, right? Perfect right, age. Yeah. yeah. Middle school. And here's the biggest thing, and I think I said this to you before. I didn't start playing organized football until I was a junior in high school. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I was a hooper. Mm-hmm. I was a hooper. And the main reason was because camps for big guys didn't exist. Right. And the the, the the most important thing about that is because. Most kids that age don't know they're going to be an offensive, defensive line. Okay. Like everybody wants to play quarterback, running back, wide receiver, <laughs> right, defensive right. back. Why? Because everybody wants to touch the ball. Right. Everybody right. wants to touch the ball. But now here's the biggest thing I tell a lot of parents. Playing offense and defensive line now, those are specialty positions now. Mm-hmm. Like – it's not just put five big fat guys together on the offensive line and just tell them to block the thing that's in front of you. That doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And it's the same way on the other side of the ball. You got to be a specialist. So you got to start training for those positions right now. So here's my biggest thing with camps. And again, it's transparency to me is everything, right? If you are going to spend a day, two days, three days, a week at a camp, you got to be ultra uh, uh, skeptical about the development that your kid is going to get because why? It's either going to turn them on or turn them off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So turn them on, turn them on. We're the one position where other than the center, we should never touch the football. We should never touch the football. <laughs> or you ne- or you well, you don't really touch the football. <laughs> if an old lineman that's not a center that is touching the football, guess what? Something All bad happened. Problems. Yes, something All bad, the- something bad happened. <laughs> so so with that, so with that being said, man. You got to make sure you put them with people that truly understand how to develop that position. That's something I've been doing, man, forever, forever. And a lot of it came from the way I was I was looking at camps and I'm saying, whomever this is, they really shouldn't be running this camp. They just mm. collected. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, so most of the time to, that's the case. Yeah, most of the time yeah, that's the case. So, so yeah. I do. I try to steer, steer people away from those types of things. And I tell them, if you're really serious about developing as an offensive or defensive lineman, get with people that have played the position, but more importantly, know how to instruct the position at the age level of your particular athlete. That's what you got to do. So, so let me ask you, do you do, do you do any camps? Do you have any camps? Do you know of any camps? So I work with, I work, I work with the young, the young kids. I work with Mm -hmm. the junior high kids uh, specifically. Mm-hmm. The reason being, re- reason being, is because to me, that's that that's my lifeblood right there. If I feel, like, I feel like if I can get you to understand the basics about offensive and defensive line play, then by the time you get into a college system, mm-hmm. that college coach isn't teaching you how to get into a proper three point stance. Mm-hmm. He's not teaching you about hand placement. Foot, right, foot right. Foot you already know. Yeah, because you already know. So now he can scaffold on top of that. So I do. I specialize and work with the younger kids. Wow. What what is, what was your and I'm gonna let you go because we're almost done uh, and I know your time is valuable. Prime gonna be calling you, knocking on your door. What you doing? In there? Okay, <laughs> but, talking to Irv. <laughs> yeah, he gonna be, okay. All right, cool. All right, tell he calls me the hip hop rib. By the way, that's what he calls me. So so when you see him and you tell him what we talked about earlier, uh, tell him say, hey man, the hip hop rib wants to talk to you, and he's gonna be like, huh? <laughs> so he, he gave me that nickname. Um, so. What was your when you met with the team? I'm sure he put you in front of the team because I saw some video where he put Sap Warren Sap in front of the team. What was we gonna go out with this? What were your words to the team when you met when you got the opportunity to speak to the team in, in its entirety for the first time? Everything impacts everything. Ooh, and here, here's what I mean about that. You and I were kind of going back and forth about this. We understand this. Because we've done this, right? Right. But most people that want to, that claim they want to play a professional sport, here's what, and let's let's speak about football specifically. The thing that surprises most guys when they end up going pro is how much time they actually spend in a classroom. Mm. Like that blows their mind. <laughs> they they can't understand. Well, man, you think they're at practice all day? No, it is at least a nine to five. At least that. Yes. But if you're a real pro, it's a seven to seven in most cases. Mm-hmm. And in that time frame, you're in classrooms, you're in special teams, you're in position rooms, you're in group teams, you're doing walkthroughs. Then you go out and you practice for an hour and 45 minutes at the most. So everything impacts everything. What does that mean? When we're in these meetings, we need to be taking notes. We need to be asking questions. We need to be attentive. We need to, we need to be asking the right questions. We need to make sure we're, we're paying attention to not just what my person is doing that I'm looking at, but understand what the scheme is, all these types of things. Here's my question to you. If you can't go to class, if you can't go to your English class or your calculus class or your whatever it is that you're taking in college for 45 minutes, what on God's green earth makes you think you can go and play professional football? <laughs> Woo! Because you're not going to be able to do it. Right. You're not going to be able to do it because you're not going to be able to learn. So what I'm trying to get our guys to understand, and you know what? We got a good group here. We do. But you know, teenagers are going to be teenagers. Right. But the ones that want to make that transition, they got to understand that everything I do off the field affects everything that I'm trying to do on the field. Everything affects everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. I'll close with this. When I was in Philly, and me, you remember Ian Beckles, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, listen, listen, listen. When I was in Philly, I'll I, I start with this. When I was in Dallas, I used to always say, okay, I'm going to beat Emmett Smith in the weight room this morning. I'm going to beat him in the weight room. Yeah, right. Every, 
Emmett would get there no later than 5.30 a.m. every morning. Wow. By the time I would walk in there, Emmett would be sweating. Wow. He would already be sweating. And he told me flat out, he said, Big G, you never going to beat me in here, bro. <laughs> You're just not going to do it. So then fast forward, when I get to, when I get to, uh, when I get to Philly, Ian Beckles and I, we're fighting for the same position. Mm-hmm. I could never beat that brother in the, in, in the room. I could never beat him there. I could never beat him there. But I beat everybody else there, but I couldn't be Ian there. Dude, <laughs> everything affects everything. Everything mm-hmm. impacts everything. Just him saying, you know what, I'm going to go to sleep earlier. I'm going to make sure that I get there earlier than G so I can get my body rated better, better prepared than G. Like that, that's what took him over the top. I was still learning that at that at that stage of my right, career. Right. Then transfer when I got to the Bucks. Oh man, listen, there were some lessons that I had learned in Dallas, some lessons that I learned in Philly. And by the time I got to Tampa, I was a consummate pro. I was a consummate pro by that time. Now here's the deal. I wished I would have been a consummate pro by day one, but I learned the lesson. I'm 51 years old right now. I'm still involved with college sports. I'm still involved with elite high school sports. I'm still involved with the NFL. I mentor some of the best guys you see on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I take all those things that I learned that I may not have been able to give to myself and perfect for myself, but I perfected it for the ones that's coming after me. Mm-hmm. So that's and, what I'm doing, man. I love every last bit of it. And you're 51. You're still young, bro. 51 was a long time ago for me. <laughs> you don't 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 sweat that, bro. You you got plenty of time, plenty of energy, plenty of strength. You got it going on, man. I'm I am so. I was when I heard the news, saw the news. I was I immediately texted you and just I was so happy to hear that you're out there because I know it's a great situation for you. I know all of those young kids young players young men who are going to cross your path are going to be endowed with wisdom not just about how to play football but how to live life how to treat people right how to be a man how to carry themselves what kind of how to make decisions how to how to handle their finances all of that they're going to get a plethora of information that we when we were younger when we were the age never had access to nobody took the time to give to us and man, just congratulations, bro, with with everything that's going on. And uh, listen, I'm I'm in your corner. I'm cheering you on, all of y'all. I can't wait to see the product that goes on the field this year. All the people talking all that junk last year. Hey, Prime ain't gonna do nothing. Watch what he does. Watch what happens this year. Watch what Colorado does this year. I'm looking for big things, big expectations, brother. Yeah, it's a blessing and a calling, man. That's the best thing I can give you. And everybody here feels that same way. So we're excited. We're excited to see what happens as well. That's great, man. I I always say it this way. Um, Everything's a competition. Everything. 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 Like you say, everything affects everything. To me, everything's a competition. Not that I'm trying to beat somebody. Not that I'm trying to put my foot on somebody's neck and use them to go higher. But guess what? I'm not going to let anybody outwork me. When I, in my circle, you're not going to outwork me. I mean, you're not, right. you're just not going to, it's, it's a competition. I need to, if I can do better, I'm going to do better. I've always got to keep people in front of me who are doing more and doing better than me. Why to keep me going, to keep me inspired, to keep me wanting to do more and to do better, man. And I'm just, uh, I'm just happy. I know you and I'm proud to say, I know you, you're my brother and I know prime. I'm going to get the prime. Eventually he always says he wears those shirts. I ain't hard to find. Well, I know where you're at prime. I just can't get to you, but <laughs> Even if, oh I gotta, even if I got to wait till I walk up on him when he comes to, to come to Nebraska, the second game of the season, I'm going to walk up on him on the field. If I don't see him before then, he's he going to see me then. <laughs> Listen, we're we going we gonna to definitely make that happen because when I think about uh, the level of influence that the two of you have had in in in, in my upbringing mm-hmm. as, as a pro and as a man, I've got to get y'all two together, man. We'll but definitely do that. I, I just want to get him on the, on the podcast. Yeah, take me look. Take my podcast to the next level. Let me let me get a little, little prime. <laughs> well, listen, George. Thanks, bro. I really do appreciate you. When I text you, you responded. You you and you didn't. That's something that I really do appreciate. You don't know it, but I do because there have been maybe it's happened to you before. There have been some people that I have played with in the past where I've tried to reach out to and they kind of big time me like. 
I ain't never, you know, I don't want to get into all that, but you're not like that, bro. I appreciate you. You're my brother. Uh, don't hesitate. Anything you ever need, if I can do it, you got it. Will do. And when, look, when I get back to Jersey, man, I definitely want to, I'm a ho I hope I can get back to Jersey on one of the nights when you do the live thing at the cigar spot. I definitely want to check that out. Well, yeah, let me know when you're coming back. We just, um, just the other day, too, in Camden, 27th Street, they just dedicated okay. 27th Street. They renamed yeah, the it Mike, Ro yeah. Mike right. Rozier Way. Yeah, so they just, uh, that was a great event. Uh, I saw Mike Rozier cry, man. He was crying. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the great Mike Rozier. But yeah, 27th Street, they renamed, they repaved it. They did the sidewalks. They did the curves. They did the alleys awesome. behind the houses. Yeah, man, they took care of that whole area. It looks really, really good. And they renamed awesome. it Mike Rozier Way. Put a sign up out there, Mike Rozier, home Camden, Heisman Trophy winner. It really looks good, man. It really looks good. So we need to do something like that for Big George Hegeman. Yeah. But Mike Mike deserves it. Mike deserves it. Listen, he was one. I remember when he won the Heisman years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid. I was, I was a little kid. He came riding around on this, uh, riding around, sitting in the back of his car. Yeah. I, was, I, my uncle, I said, why is that dude riding on the back of the car? And he told me, he said, well, he won this. This is this was this prestigious award in college. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. So I've always known about him, met him several times, man. He definitely deserves it. I'm, I'm happy yeah. for him. He, he's one of my best friends, man. We uh we talk all the time, play golf and whatnot. And I was there. Yeah. Fortunately, I was able to be there at the ceremony. It was wonderful. The mayor, all these prestigious people were there. Yeah. It was a great time. Great, great honor. Yeah. And like you said, well deserved. Uh but George, thank you. Big George Hegeman, everybody. Thank he is out in Colorado, the director of football leadership and engagement. Watch these kids take off. Watch these kids fly. Watch these kids, not just while they're in college, but watch what happens to them when they exit college and become a part of what we call the real world and how they achieve, how they soar, how they fly. Thanks, Big G. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Definitely. I'm, I'm going to holler at you, all right? Yes, sir. Okay, bro. Appreciate you. Later. All right. Yes, sir. What a show. What a show. What a show. We thank you. Big George Hegeman out there at the Colorado Buffaloes with Coach Prime. Yeah. Good show. Um, great information. It's just exciting to see people, to be connected to people who are influencers, who are making a difference who are uh, taking what they've learned in life, and that's what we're supposed to do. The, the, the challenges that we have, that we're able to overcome, some of the issues and struggles we may have in our lives, it's not just for us when we uh, go through that. Remember that. Those things happen in our lives because there's somebody along the way, once we get out, once we come out, I should say, on the other side of those challenges and struggles and difficulties, we come out, Having learned, we come out better, we come out stronger, we come out more focused, we come out with information about that particular situation, what we've been through. But that's not just for us to keep to ourselves. We go through and live our lives in a way that whatever we have to deal with, whatever we learned, uh, whatever we've gained in life, we're supposed to pass that on to somebody else because we never know what people are dealing with. And when we come out, there's always an opportunity to share your testimony. Orlando Council Pettigrew. Hey, Pettigrew. Is that right? Did I say that the right way? Skull Murphy in the house. What's going on, bro? <laughs> Ed Crawley's in the house. How y'all doing? Billy Bell's in the house. Good to see you. Shout out to you. I don't know. if Maybe you all came on earlier and uh, I couldn't see your comments. It was taking a minute for some of the comments to come on. So maybe there was a, de a delay in the virtual world i'm not sure keenan Harmon is in the house stephen pace in the house okay i see a bunch of you on right now uh vincent capriati mom's in the house good to see y'all listen we want to pay the bills one more time before we get out of here y'all check this out are you planning a special trip or a night out don't bother with the hassle of driving parking and traffic just call Ed Smooth Transport. One way or round trips available. We will take you there. And we will also pick you up. 
Enjoy a night on the town. With Ed's Smooth Transport. Call us. 609-471-2653 or 609-314-6619. Visit our website to take advantage of our monthly specials at www.smoothtransport.com. Ed's Smooth Transport. Where experience meets comfort. We're back. I want to thank everybody for your support today. Yes, Billy Bell, I see you. And that comment right there is absolutely prophetic. <laughs> I'll be looking for Prime to appear on the fireplace. And yes, you won't be disappointed. I promise you that. I promise you that. It's in the works. Don't know exactly when it's going to happen. I'll tell you what's not going to happen, though. When I do get confirmation from him, I'm not going to have him on that following week. I'm going to try to push it back like four or five weeks. That way I can <laughs> advertise for weeks to get people an opportunity to put it on the calendar. So I have, I can have a whole bunch of folk watching while prime is on. That's going to be a crazy show. He and I have a lot of stories, uh, you know, playing, playing against one another. I'm sorry, playing against one another and uh, playing with one another down in Washington. When I was down to Washington, uh, Prime was down there. Our lockers were right next to each other. We we went to school together. We took a uh, seminary class together. So we did some preaching together. When I first opened the church, Prime came and preached for me up here in New Jersey. Yes, he did. Uh, did a great job. He was That's what he was doing back then. He was preaching before he got into coaching. And um, I've been down to his house. We had some experiences where we were trying to do this business venture together. So We've got some history together. Um, it's just been a little bit difficult for me. I guess if I, you know, pushed hard enough, I probably could get in touch with him without, you know, the assistance of George. But now that George is there, uh, I'm I'm in the I'm in the door. I have direct connect to him uh, through George. So we're going to be talking here briefly, shortly, and uh, we're going to make that happen. So keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, because Prime Coach Prime. It's going to be at the Friar Place somewhere here in the near future. I'm definitely going to do it before. We're, we're definitely going to do it before the college football season starts. I don't want to try to bother him uh, when he gets busy during the season. So we're going to do it sometime. What is this? April, May, June, probably in June sometime um, before he gets too busy. Billy Bell's in the house. My man, he says, Stephen Pace, thank you. He says, great show. Uh, I, I thought so, too. I thought uh, George is very... Very informative, very uh, transparent. Um, he's just a great guy. He was that way when he was here in Philadelphia when I played with him. And he was like that also when he was playing for the Dallas Cowboys, even though he was a, my competition or my opposer. But he was still a great guy. Joe Harris, what's going on? Skull Murphy's in the house. I see you. Uh-huh. Um, Orlando Council Pettigrew. I think I'm saying that the right way. I believe so. Um, Ed Crawley is in the house. Keenan Harmon is in the house. Stephen Pace, shout out to you. Vincent Capriati, shout out to you. And Keenan Harmon again. All right, y'all. We'll be back next week here at the Friar Place. Don't know who the guest is going to be yet, but I promise you there'll be a guest. <laughs> I've got a couple of people in mind. But uh, hit the notifications button. Don't forget to subscribe. 
here at the Friar Place on YouTube. If you're not already on YouTube and I see a bunch of you who are on Facebook, please go over to YouTube. If you do have the access app to YouTube on your mobile device or on your tablet, go to YouTube. Search the Friar Place. That's F-R-Y-A-R. You can see it right there at the bottom of the screen. And subscribe. Hit notifications buttons. We come on every Friday live, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 to 7 p.m., don't like to hold our guests forever. We're very respectful of their time, so that's why we're only on for an hour. But an hour is long enough because y'all people can't pay attention for more than an hour if they can pay attention for an hour. But anyway, <laughs> we'll be back next week. Same time, same place, same purpose. Right here at the Friar Place. And the purpose is to have a conversation that's fire because that's what we do. See you next week. Uh, let me get the right button.